Hi guys, welcome back to another video of me teaching. And today I have this integral from the 2022 Harvard Integration B Question 6 Finals. So, why don't we just get into the question? Well, this integral does look very, very complicated, doesn't it? Well, we're actually going to use partial fractions to make it a bit simpler, just a bit. So, how do we use partial fractions here? Well, partial fractions says that we can just separate this into the first term over 2 and the second term over 2. And that's actually what we're going to do. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of, of course, first it's ln of x over 2. And then we add it with that whole big fraction over 2. And now, I'm not just going to write that over 2. I'm actually going to multiply this 3 to the bottom. So the bottom just becomes 2 times 3, right? And the top is just, as you can tell, ln square root of x plus ln cubed of x raised to the dot over 4. And we don't have any more over 3 because we already multiplied that to the bottom. Now, we're going to do the same thing. So, ignore this term, and we can partial fraction this. Ln square root of x over this, plus this over this. And when we do this big fraction over this, we're going to multiply the 4 to the bottom. Just the exact same thing we just did. So, this is still equal to integral from 0 to 1. Don't forget this. Ln of x over 2. And then we add a width. The first term over the denominator. And then, like I said, when we do this over that, we're going to multiply the 4 to the bottom. So we add 2 times 3 times 4. And the top is ln x cubed plus dot dot dot. Now, we have a couple of things to notice. First of all, we see that if we keep repeating and repeating this process, it will just become a sum or a series. Second of all, we see that the denominators are all factorials of a certain number. For example, 2 is the factorial of 2. 2 times 3 is 3 factorial. 2 times 3 times 4 is 4 factorial. So then, this reminds us of the McLaurin expansion of e to the power of x. So I'm just going to write that for you guys. e to the power of x is equal to the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial times x to the power of n. And this, once we expand this, will be 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial. And we add dot dot dot. Now, can we see that this looks very similar to this? But there's one major problem still. This is x and that's a ln of x. But that's actually a very easy fix. We can just replace this x with ln of x. So we get e to the power of ln of x is equal to. Just replace all of the x's here with ln of x. It becomes 1 plus ln of x plus ln squared of x over 2 factorial. And then plus ln cubed of x over 3 factorial, and so on. Now, let's see, is this the same? Well, not yet. Because as we see, from the 3 factorial term, or we can do it from the 2 factorial term, this is ln squared of x, but this is just ln of x. So how do we fix that? Well, that's actually a pretty easy fix. We can just divide both sides from this by ln of x. So I'll write it over here. So we know that e to the power of ln x over ln x will actually be this divided by ln x plus this divided by ln x, and so on, so on. So it will be 1 over ln of x plus 1, because ln x and ln x cancel. Then 
this whole thing will actually just be the integral. So we still add ln square of x over 2 factorial. Wait, since we divided the x, we have to minus the minus 1 to all of the powers of ln of x. Here we add ln squared of x, 3 factorial, and so on. And now, as we can see, this is the same as this. So then, what do we do? Well, it's very easy because we see that this is just equal to this. Move these two terms to the left hand side. It becomes this minus this minus that. So we can simplify this into a very simple integral. So it becomes the integral from 0 to 1 of, we know that this is just this minus this minus that. So it becomes e to the power of ln of x over ln of x, then minus 1 over ln of x and minus 1 dx. So, haven't we made this integral so much easier? Yes. First thing to notice is, we know e to the power of ln x is just obviously x. Okay. And then now, I'm going to put these two fractions together and leave this one into a separate integral. So, this is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of the first one. Combine the two fractions. It's just simply x minus 1 over ln of x dx. And then we subtract the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 dx. And now this is super easy to integrate. If you do the work on your own, you can see that it is just 1. So now, the thing that we're trying to actually solve is this integral. So how do we solve it? Well, although it looks pretty easy, we're actually going to use an advanced and kind of cool method. It's called the Feynman technique or the Feynman trick. So, what does the Feynman trick state? Well, it states that we're going to add a parameter into this integral. So, if we just assume this integral to be i, then we're going to add a, param a parameter a to make a new integral, i of a, where we place the a somewhere in here. And then Feynman technique says, if we take the derivative of that integral with respect to whatever parameter we have, say a, and then we hope that it becomes an easier integral so we can solve it. And then once we have that final answer, we can integrate back the value of i prime of a to get i of a. So this is basically, instead of going for a direct answer, we're going in a loop. So. The problem is, where are we going to put our parameter a? Well, before we do all of that, I'm first going to clean this up and put this integral on at the very top. Okay, so now, like I said, we're going to first assume this integral to be i. But now, where are we going to place our parameter a? Well, we're actually going to place it into the power of x. Why? Because if we take the derivative with respect to a of x to the power of a, then this equals to x to the power of a times ln of the base, which is x. And then the derivative of 1 in any single world will be 0. And then when you over this with ln of x, then that ln of x and this ln of x will cancel out. So that makes it into so that makes it easier to integrate. So that's why we're thinking to place the a to the power of x. So we can create our new integral i of a to be the integral from 0 to 1 of, we place the a to the power of x, x to the power of a minus 1 over ln x dx. And then like I said, we're going to differentiate this integral with respect to a. And we're actually going to and we're actually going to sketch past the multivariable calculus involving partial derivatives, but I won't go in depth about what it actually means. 
So, when we take the derivative, so we know that i prime of a will actually be, okay, so we're going to take the derivative of this with respect to a. So, don't forget the dba of this. Oh, there's an A here. Don't forget, we have placed our parameter over here. Okay? So, like I said, we're going to place this into the integral. And to do that, we need to change it into a partial derivative. Okay? So then, this will be integral 3, 0 to 1 of partial over partial A of this. dx okay so now what do we do well of course we need to take the derivative of this with respect to a right this equal to integral 3 0 to 1 of like i said if we take the derivative of this we have x to the power of a times 1 of x blah, blah blah and then one thing to note is that Every single x here is a constant because we are in the a realm. So we can just ignore that ln of x just for now, but we have to don't forget to put it back in. So again, we take the derivative of x to the power of a with respect to a. So we have x to the power of a times ln of x. The derivative of 1 is, of course, 0. And don't forget, to over ln of x. Don't forget dx. So now, all the derivatives have been gone with respect to a, and now we're going to try and integrate this with respect to x. So, like I said, this and this cancel out. Very nice. So this is just the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the power of a dx. Okay? Now, this is a very easy integral. We can just use the reverse power rule. So, it is 1 over a plus 1 times x to the a plus 1 going from 0 to 1. Now, this was with respect to x. So, these bounds have to be plugged in into x, not a. So, don't get confused about this with respect to something. It's just... 1 over a plus 1. So now we have figured out i, i prime of a to be this. And now we're going to integrate it back to get a new i of a. So I'm going to rewrite i prime of a. Okay. So now, we're going to integrate this with respect to a. So integrate, integrate, dA, dA. So the left-hand side will obviously just be i, normal a. And then this, of course, is just ln as the value of a plus 1 plus c. And now, the problem is, we have to find the value of c. Hmm, but how? Well, this is how we're going to do it. In the finalist technique, when we have an equation like this, we first think to ourselves, what is an easy value of a for which we could plug in into i of a and solve this integral easily? Well, the first number you think of is zero. So why don't we test it out? The numerator becomes one minus one, which is zero. So the whole thing becomes zero. So the integral becomes zero. So isn't that very simple? So if we left a to be 0, which is our very easy parameter term, then we see i of 0 will be equal to, i of 0, like I just said, will be 0, is equal to ln of 0 plus 1, which is ln of 1, which is 0, and plus c. So what does this mean? This means that c is equal to 0, right? So then we actually don't need the c because we already know that c is equal to 0. And now, the very last step is, we see what value of a will make it the same as our wanted integral. 
So of course, a is equal to 1 will make it the same as i. So all you have to do is plug in a is equal to 1, and we have figured out i, our original integral. Well, actually not. So a, i of 1 is ln of 1 plus 1, which is ln of 2. So this is equal to ln of 2. We're not done yet. I said. I will leave out the minus 1 as long as you guys don't forget it. So, we still have the minus 1 to figure out this integral. So, I'm going to create a very big arrow. So, know that this integral is equal to ln of 2 minus 1. Bam. So, this is the final answer of this super complicated looking integral from the Harvard Integration D. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy my video, and if you want more videos like this, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to master something, teach it.